the Lunacod 1 made history as the first remote-controlled robot rover to roam freely across the moon's surface. Also known as Moonwalker 1 Device 8EL number 203, this robotic lunar rover was developed as part of the Lunacod program, whose initial goal was to support the Soviet human moon missions. Lunacod 1 arrived at the moon aboard the Luna 17 spacecraft in November of 1970. Its innovative technology recovered valuable scientific material and information related to the moon's soil. The rover sent over 20,000 images and 200 high-fidelity panoramas back to Moscow. Designed originally with a lifespan of three lunar days, the equivalent of 90 days on Earth, it would start an astonishing career of 11 lunar days, almost an entire Earth year. Lunacod 1 traveled 11 kilometers across the moon's rocky surface under a simultaneous five-man control team. On September 14, 1971, on the anniversary of Sputnik 1, contact was abruptly lost with the vehicle. Failed attempts to reach it forced the Russians to abandon it. Forty years later, in late 2010, American and French scientists conducting remote research on the moon were astonished by the discovery of an unknown buried object. It was the Lunacod 1, and its signal was more powerful than ever. The relic of the Cold War had made a strange comeback. Once the Soviet Union solidified its grip over most parts of Eastern Europe after the end of World War II, the Cold War began. By the early 1950s, the United States was startled to realize that their nuclear and military stronghold faced a new competitor. It was the USSR, and an arms race began. For almost three decades, both countries would go on a development rampage of military innovations whose sole objective was to overpower the enemy and shift the Cold War's balance. Closely related to this race for the ultimate display of force, a more peaceful competition rose between both countries. It was called the Space Race, and it reached its height during the 1960s. The United States and the Soviet Union engaged in a race to send humans to the moon as another way of displaying their tremendous technological developments. During the first years, the Soviets had the upper edge due to the initially successful Vostok and Sputnik programs, which were part of the Russian space program. The USSR sent the first human to space, Yuri Gagarin, in 1961 aboard the Vostok 1 capsule. It also manufactured the first two- and three-person spaceships. The Americans were successful as well. The American space program evolved into NASA, which produced the Apollo and Gemini programs, among others. Their ultimate objective was not only to send a man into space, they sought to land him on the moon. In 1968, after the deadly launch pad explosion of the Zond rocket, the USSR suspended all projects related to landing a man on the moon. The delay would be costly. In 1969, at the height of the Vietnam War, Neil Armstrong became the first human to walk on Earth's satellite. The U.S. was unanimously declared the winner of the space race. The moon belonged to the U.S., and it looked like there was nothing the Soviets could do to stop the Americans from stepping forward. But an ambitious project was under development to prove that Russia still had some tricks up its sleeves. It was named the Lunacod Program, and its goal was to put remote-controlled robot rovers on the moon. The Lunacod, or Moonwalker Program, was part of a series of Russian robotic lunar vehicles designed to land on the moon. The first prototype, Lunacod Zero, was launched in 1969. It was destroyed during takeoff. The last prototype, Lunacod 3, was scheduled to launch sometime in 1977, but it never came to be, and the project got suspended. The Lunacods were designed to assist Soviet cosmonauts in their landings on the moon. After the cancellation of the USSR's manned landings, they were redesigned to function as remote-controlled robots for exploration and scientific research on the moon's surface. Lunacods were transported to the moon by Luna spacecraft powered by Proton-K rockets. The Luna 17 lander, carrying Lunacod 1, was launched successfully from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on November 10, 1970. It made it to lunar orbit five days later and soft-landed in the flood basalt surface of Mare Imbrium, the Sea of Rains, on November 17. Time magazine wrote about the robot's historic landing, quote, Three hours after reaching the moon, aboard the latest unmanned Russian moon probe, Luna 17, Lunacod 1 lumbered down one of two ramps extended by the mothership and moved forward thus taking the first giant step for robot kind on another celestial body. NASA, genuinely intrigued by the curious Soviet vehicle, would also write about it in a summary of the mission, quote, Lunacod 1 was a lunar vehicle formed of a tub-like compartment with a large convex lid on eight independently powered wheels. Lunacod was equipped with a cone-shaped antenna, a highly directional helical antenna, four television cameras, and special extendable devices to impact the lunar soil for soil density and mechanical property tests. The rover was also equipped with a cosmic ray detector, X-ray telescope, X-ray spectrometer, and a laser reflector device of French origin to measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Its body was hermetically sealed, filled with nitrogen at standard atmospheric pressure. 
The dome panel on top was hinged at the rear to be used as an insulation layer for the three week lunar nights. To face the moon's extremely cold temperatures, the lunar cod was kept warm by a radio isotope that generated heat. Multiple cameras on the rover were used by a five man crew that coordinated to steer the vehicle in the desired direction. Driving was no easy task. The crew moved slowly, meticulously studying the terrain to avoid losing communication with Earth or collide with any obstruction. A ninth wheel, an odometer, was placed at the rover's rear to measure the traveled distance. The rover relied on thermal energy from a polonium-210 radioisotope heater to survive the night colds when temperatures reached minus 150 degrees Celsius. The Lunacod was solar-powered by day. Before conducting any operation, the vehicle opened its lid to charge its batteries. Given that the moon always has one side facing the Earth, daylight and nighttime hours on most spots of the surface last about two weeks. The rover was designed to last three lunar days, the equivalent of 90 Earth days. The Lunacod exceeded the expectations of the USSR. It went on for 11 lunar days. The rover traveled 10.5 kilometers before contact was lost with Moscow on October 4, 1971, 14 years after the first Sputnik was launched. The USSR tried to reach it repeatedly, but failed to do so. The Lunacod 1 was then forgotten in place of other projects. For 322 Earth days, almost a year, it had sent back 20,000 TV pictures, 200 TV panoramas, and information from more than 500 lunar soil tests to Moscow. In 2010, 40 years after the Lunacod 1 lost contact with Earth, it was found by NASA and French scientists. A NASA press statement said, quote, On April 22nd, Murphy and his team sent pulses of laser light from the 3.5-meter telescope at the Apache Point Observatory in New Mexico, zeroing in on the target coordinates provided by Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. A laser retroreflector on Lunacod 1 intercepted the pulses and sent a clear signal back to Earth. The aforementioned Tom Murphy of UC San Diego, in charge of the research team that was trying to activate the Lunacod, said to the press, quote, We shined a laser on Lunacod 1's position, and we were stunned by the power of the reflection. Lunacod 1 is talking to us loudly and clearly. We got about 2,000 photons from Lunacod 1 on our first try. After almost 40 years of silence, this rover has a lot to say. The American team could make contact because of three retro reflectors placed on the moon by U.S. Apollo astronauts during the 1960s and 70s. These were initially set to allow laser ranging of the moon's orbit. A fourth reflector was placed by Lunacod 2, the successor of Lunacod 1 that landed in 1973. Eric Silverberg, a retired veteran of the space race who was in charge of the lunar laser ranging activities at the McDonald Observatory during the 60s and the 80s, was astonished when he discovered that NASA had contacted the Soviet vehicle after 40 years. He said to the press, quote, During that time, we successfully ranged all three of the Apollo corner reflectors and the Lunacod 2 reflector. With Lunacod 1 back in the picture, the U.S. research team could use laser ranging to dismantle Einstein's gravity theory. Murphy and his team were trying to, quote, see if we can break it. Einstein's theory of general relativity establishes that the mass and energy in massive objects, such as the sun, make a space curve. This curving tells the objects around the massive body how to move. This is what makes the Earth and Moon fall toward the sun. The Apache Point Observatory Lunar Laser Ranging Operation will continue further testing in hopes of finding a crack in Einstein's theory of general relativity. Lunacod 1's success was followed by Lunacod 2 in 1973, which drove for approximately 37 kilometers on the lunar surface, tripling its predecessor's range. For 40 years, no other vehicle landed on the moon's surface. It wasn't until 2013 that another robot explored the moon's surface, when the Chinese space program sent Chang'e 3 and its rover U-2. Although the lander U-2 could not move after its second lunar night, it remained operational for 31 months, surpassing the 11-month record previously held by the Soviet Lunacod 2.